What's up, guys? What's up, Sekizen? My name is Jake. Welcome to Abandoned, episode 31. This, of course, is the show where we talk about some of the most interesting abandoned places in the world. Vancouver is one of the Baconator. largest cities. A city known for its beautiful views, extravagant condos, luscious parks, being a popular cruise destination, and much, much more. The city is also known for the Subaru of Expo 86, and Prime George. a World's Fair event which was the last to be held in Vancouver. Recep Jader. On the other side of the city where cruise ships call their home port, down the river about six miles is a relic from the past expo. A fast food restaurant like no other, Friendship 500, or better known as the Mick Barge. Oh, she's beautiful. Vancouver was preparing for Expo 86, the World Exposition on Transportation There's a prime and Education. Ace wing. The World's Fair was set to Resume take Commander. 160 acres of land, and like all World Fair events, multiple different pavilions and buildings would be constructed on the land. McDonald's was set to have several of their restaurants Whoa. in the expo, specifically five of them. McDonald's Most of World, them eh? The basic generic restaurants. However, McDonald's had one planned like no other. Designed by naval architecture firm Robert Allen, McDonald's Thanks, was building a two-story floating restaurant called yeah, right. Friendship 500. The reason why it was given the 500 name was because it was the 500th McDonald's restaurant in Canada. Though technically it wasn't the only floating McDonald's in the world. Even though dates are a little skewed, sometime in the early 80s, the fast food chain opened a riverboat restaurant in St. Louis. And sometime in the early 2000s it later closed. With $12 million collectively being spent on all five new restaurants, Friendship 500 was launched and taken upriver to serve guests. I wish they could do some Bioshock business. Infinite it shit. It was rumored though that the final cost Make of a flying McDonald's. was around $8 million. Along with the fair, the McBarge opened in May of 1986. Oh, hey, Ronald. It was 187 feet long, featured two Thanks, stories Trap, of dining Neo, rooms, and, and was able to seat around 390 nah, people. paintballs didn't Friendship hurt at all. 500 was located on the far west portion of the fair, anchored adjacent to the Malaysia Pavilion. People absolutely loved the restaurant, and collectively throughout all the other McDonald's restaurants in the expo, it looks pretty it was cool. one of the most popular and profitable. In fact, throughout the entire fair's run in 1986, the restaurant had sold more hamburgers than any other McDonald's restaurant in British Columbia. Wow. This was probably because of the design to this floating restaurant just being so unique. Its early melty to mid-80s modern design was eye-catching enough, along with the fact that it was on the water. The interior was also something to be desired, as it what? was a it looks new like look shit. for the fast food chain, with wood floors, framed art, looks and like... plants throughout. It was McDonald's. It looks like the Krusty Krab. To enhance their image as Doesn't look that cool. Being a more enjoyable quality experience. And this proved to be very effective as Friendship 500 was extremely popular in the fair. As British Columbia was entering its winter season, the official closure of Expo 86 had come on October 13, 1986. Now, the fact that the McDonald's restaurant was floating wasn't just a gimmick. The idea behind it was actually pretty clever. Once the fair ran through its six-month lifespan, the barge could just be moved to another destination. This made the initial investment of the alleged $8 million much more justified. However, as Expo 86 was hey, is that Epcot? Up, the McBarge was still trying to locate a spot for it to travel to. And as 1987 came in, Friendship 500 continued to I have to not watched the tag championship this year. Closed. Even though McDonald's had negotiated a 40-year lease, Maybe Vancouver said, City Poe. Council denied McDonald's request to continue operating post-Expo 86. McDonald's continued to search for new potential places to dock the barge, however to no avail. As all of their proposals were turned down, the barge continued to sit in the former Expo 86 location for another four years. Keeping the barge shame. closed cost the company around $150,000. So many hamburgers were sold there, and now look at them. The former fairgrounds land was eventually sold to developers, and of course, they wanted the barge gone. So in July Rafferty. of 1991, McDonald's had given up fighting for the future of the barge, and now had to find a place to dock it while it was in limbo. So Friendship 500 was taken up and around Vancouver, down the river, and anchored offshore in the Burrard Inlet anchored only seven miles from its original dock, resting about 200 feet offshore of an oil refinery. Thanks, Reese, Megan. The 187-foot-long restaurant was left floating there indefinitely and abandoned. 
Despite the rapid deterioration of Friendship 500, who are these two? Considered to be an asset and was soon Mafia sold members or something? What, what is this? Owners. Despite this, though, the vessel remained untouched and abandoned for years. Other than the removal of the interior furniture and some fixtures, the interior of the restaurant remained untouched. It wasn't until Good 2003 paint, though. when Marvel and New Line Cinema had oh. rented the barge as a filming location Thanks for some Megan and the 10 gift subs. Trinity. The Night Stalker's headquarters barge that was a, a restaurant for I hope I didn't fuck up your name but thank you for the 10 gift subs bay Vancouver for years and uh, I get to thinking <laughs> what if we drag this barge into port and turned it into our night stalker's lair and it's just a shell with windows and we're putting in all the technology all the weapons the armory everything the night stalkers do to slay vampires yeah I've never seen Blade Trinity December of 2004 and while I've never I seen know that's it, Jessica Biel though it wasn't really that great not much of the barge was changed for the filming, however some past relics from the former McDonald's were obviously taken out, and some walls were repainted. The exterior remained mostly the same, and by 2004, the Mick barge had returned to its original- Oh, like Beyonce with an R. Infant. The former restaurant was once again Beyonce? left abandoned, with the future still unknown. Well, thanks it wasn't until subs. 2009 when the man who bought the McBarge back in 1999, Howard Meekin, had big and expensive plans for the former restaurant. The plan for Friendship 500's future was to bring it into an extensive rehabilitation and dock it in a town called Mission, British Columbia. It's about 40 miles from Vancouver, and part of the development was to make it the centerpiece of a $10 million floating complex. <laughs> Why? It would wrap around the base of Friendship 500 with light commercial and various food offerings inside, including a high-quality restaurant. It would have been called Sturgeons on the Fraser, named after the river it was on. As 2010 came in though, the proposal was still awaiting approval by city council, and soon after, the concept was rejected on grounds that float planes would produce too much noise. So I haven't again, seen Black Widow yet, it's not out yet. Ever be used Thanks again, some kilt. Kinda low. By 2011, Friendship 500 was renamed to Seaborn 2 and listed for sale on PacificBoatBrokers.com for $680,000. What a However, bargain. With no sale, the barge continued to float abandoned in the same place it has for the majority of its life. With multiple broken windows and exterior doors even being left open, the immense amount of moisture inside the structure had been taking its toll on the walls and floors. Makes it too Mold wavy. And moss had been thriving on the former restaurant, and vandalism was becoming a problem. The interior had its copper and valuables stripped from what was left, and kids started tagging the inside and outside. Oh no! Have Everyone some respect! Some measures would be taken oh, man. this, with boards covering the broken windows, as well as fences with barbed wire on them being placed on easily accessible spots on the barge. As a few years passed, this didn't Tyrese. really stop much though, as Friendship 500 was becoming well known as a local eyesore. And as more time passed, concerns began to arise on the possibility of the barge even sinking. By 2013, the entire structure was listing. However, the barge's <laughs> owner claimed that Friendship 500 was built to last 90 years, and that it had multiple watertight compartments. Yeah, I'm Finally, sure it's fine. news broke in 2015 that the Mick Barge would see a future use. Whoa! Despite its extremely run-down appearance, the dream Howard Meekin had to see Mick Barge in use once again never left him. The plan was, by late 2015, the barge would be moved up to a maintenance dock in some Maine, Zionos. British Columbia. The barge would then undergo a $4 million renovation. What a waste of money, purpose. holy shit. In late 2015, the exterior was majorly cleaned up with a fresh coat of paint over the massive graffiti and white boards over the broken windows. And as promised, on December 22nd, 2015, two tugboats took Friendship 500- Mick Barge, let's go! Through and out of Burrard Inlet, around Vancouver, and down through the Fraser River to its new destination. The new purpose of the barge, though, remained unknown, as Howard had signed a non-disclosure agreement. The, prime the only hush. information the public was given about the, the project Zionos. was that it would be ready by 2016, but they never met that deadline. No, so McBarge! God, why? Well, as early quarter two of 2017, Friendship 500 is still docked for renovation. As tier one goes, Tez and the Prime has been gutted, but work seems slow overall. I actually have talked to an individual who is involved with the renovation and confirmed to me that the project is still waiting for the necessary funds. 
As for the original Expo 86 point in the Garden's Dock Den, well, since 1991, the land has now become a mixture of parkland and condominiums. I mean, of course, it's Vancouver. McBarge was an icon of Expo 86. It was loved by And it's an icon now. Unique features and forward thinking design. We never forgot it's the been McBarge. 28 years abandoned, 24 of which in the Burrard Inlet, aimlessly floating with no real future. Thankfully, a plan had been set to have this historical, unique icon saved. It's pretty rare to see something that old and deteriorate Makes to the prime point it was at and still be saved. Even though the future seems unknown for us, I truly believe the man behind its future really does care about preserving this icon. Maybe it'll be a museum for Expo 86, or maybe it'll return Prime Wiki? to a restaurant. Who knows? Maybe Look up how it's doing pit. today. A ball pit. You want it to be a big floating ball pit? Yeah. Let's see. The abandoned McBarge boat. Well, it seems like it's still abandoned as of six months ago.